So we're responsible for the CAD integration inside of ArcGIS Pro Desktop, ArcCAD, ArcCAD, it doesn't matter. Along with um, building information log, we're, we're the ones that authored the data source, but I'm not going to go in that today. Um, and then just AEC in general. So anyway, so I'm excited to be here. And hopefully you guys learn something. I always, when I come to these sessions, some of you might have attended my session in the past, but I hope that anytime you come, you pick up one little bit or one little thing that makes it worth coming. So if you don't learn anything, you say, I knew everything you said, Jeff, and you wasted my whole hour, I'll meet you at the South Bar in an hour. No, I'm <laughs> Um, come to the island if you're if you're interested. If you want to learn more about it, we got lots of guys down there and, and girls down there that would love to uh, show you some information. So let's get going. What do we want to accomplish today? Um, what I want to do first of all is I want to give you an overview of CAD support in ArcGIS Desktop. What is Desktop? That's ArcMap, Arc Catalog, Arc Pro, all those things. Um, then I want to talk about georeferencing CAD data for ArcGIS. In the hour that we have, I can't show you everything, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on Pro for that example, but there's lots of videos out there and help systems, and even come to the island if you want to figure out how to do it in ArcMap, but th that's there for you as well. I want to talk about the mapping specification for CAD or MSC can help your organization or your workflows, and we'll mention, talk about going to that a little bit. Um, if you're in ArcGIS for AutoCAD and you know what that is, that's like your document or your local feature classes. Just to think of it that way. Um, then I want to go into the loading CAD features in the geodatabase. We're going to go into that section talking about how I can take my CAD data and load it into my geodatabase so I can get all that content out and in my, where I want it to be. But I also want to talk about um, using um, export to CAD as well and why that's important. Here's a good question for you guys. Who's you, who uses export to CAD in their daily? Good. Numbers are getting better. So export to CAD is a great way to be able to do it where I want to control what my CAD data is going to come back to me as. And we'll talk about that a little bit. And then of course, Arc just for AutoCAD. Um, how, how, a little, like a quick uh, do over of what Arc just for AutoCAD is. So. And great, one of my teammates is just, team members is just joined us and sat down. So if I mess up anything, you can help me. So that's good. Um, so there's three people in there, three groups of people in this room, and you might wear all of these hats, but this, this is essentially what it boils down for me. It's displaying CAD data and map. I want to take my rich CAD information, I want to bring it into my map, and I want to have it as a reference. I want to filter it, I want to turn layers on and off, I maybe even want to change the symbology of it, but I want to have it as a background or a reference. There's also those that are say, that's great, and I want that, but I also want to be able to take that content and load it into my geodatabase. And we'll go into that methodology and then, of course, we're going to talk about delivering GIS data in a CAD format and why that's important for you guys to think about in your work, daily work, workflows. So CAD data in a geos, uh, geospatial context. What I really mean by this slide is, is CAD drawings have a lot of wealth of information that we need to get into our GIS. And it's not just one type of person in this room. There's lots of people that need to use CAD data, and that's expanding every day. Um, you know, your surveys, surveyors, your cadastral people, your AEC, architecture, engineering, construction, that whole area there, along with even geo, or geo design people as well. So there's a large wealth of people. And coming into that as well is, is the civil, civil BIM, the BIM information, all those kinds of things are content that we want to be able to get inside of GIS into our authoritative GIS um, repository. So, CAD, the, the data model, I guess what to, to keep in mind here is the data model from CAD and the data model from GIS are way different. The, the, they're quite a bit different. If I've got an AutoCAD drawing or a MicroStation drawing, everything is organized by layers, right? I get everything from AutoCAD or MicroStation, everything's on a layer. On the layer, I could have geometry that's a polyline, I could have its point, I could have it a, a piece of text, I could have all these things, right? So when, when we think of that inside of GIS, that's not how GIS works. We have homogeneous geometry types. We only have everything that's a polyline is in the polyline feature class. Everything's polygon. You can't mix that stuff, right? And in CAD, it is mixed. So what we've done in GIS is when we grab a CAD file or, or directly read a CAD file, <clears throat> we boil it down to its simple for, simplest format. We put it, we reconstruct it and build it back together, um, like Batman in the Lego movie or something. And we we. Uh, uh, put it back together into these homogeneous geometries. So if I've got my um, 
geometry for my road, for my lines. I'm also going to get these attributes or CAD properties. And with these CAD properties, I want to know that that line came from a specific level or layer. It came from a specific color. Maybe it's even a point and it's a block. And I want to know what the name of that block insert was when it came. I've got all that information that's stored within each one of those records of those feature classes. Along with that is in GIS, we all know well that we need a coordinate system, right? It can't be living in the middle of nowhere. It's got to have a coordinate system. We've got to know where it exists on the earth, along with potentially even a world file. And a world file is just a way to transform it from one location to a new location. So this should be all very familiar with you. You've seen CAD hasn't changed it's like this. It's been like this for years, whether it be ArcMap or ArcPro, it doesn't matter. Um, we've got our annotation feature classes, our multi-patch, our point, our polygon, and our polyline. Um, and all these things that are within the slide participate in those. So for example, a point, it's not just a point, but we could have a block insert in there for the AutoCAD people, but we could also have a, sh a cell or even a shared cell instance for the microstation side of things. Um, we, with, with polyline, same thing, we've got our curves, our arcs, all these things are organized together. And of course, a projection file if possible. So that's pretty much how a CAD file is displayed um, inside of ArcMap or ArcPro. That hasn't changed too much. For those of you using ArcMap, um, I, I know that you get a CAD file, and, and the people I talk to often get a CAD file, and there's a lot of information in there, but generally, we're only interested in a subset of that information, right? We get this CAD layer that's got a whole bunch of information. All we care about is a small piece of it or some subset of the CAD file. So in ArcMap, you can do things like uh, do a query filter, where I'm going to go to my polyline, and especially if I get the same CAD files all the time, I'm going to set up a query. Um, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't read all that. But um, anyways, I've got a query built where I only want to pull out a subset of that CAD file. So whenever I get it, I add it to my map. It shows me just that. So that's one way to do that. Um, and you can have these drawing layers, whether it be color and line type, you can filter all that stuff. So that works fine in our map, and that's one thing. In Pro now, let's switch gears to ArcGIS Pro. One of the improvements we've made in ArcGIS Pro with dealing with CAD data is that we have the same way we have the same five feature classes that are displayed, but what's different about it is you can notice from this graphic that we have all those queries done for you by default. If you look at the Polyline feature class, you see that we have all these unique layers that have been organized for you. And what's nice about that is one, you don't have to do that yourself. It's already there. The other one is it allows you to use these directly as input to any sort of framework tool, GP tool, or whatever you want to do with it. And um, it organizes like that, so it makes it a little bit better. It's, I find it really nice, too, because I often get a CAD file. Back when I work with it, I would get a CAD file, and it's almost you need to do the inspection of the CAD file, you know what I mean? Like you get the CAD file, and you've got to figure out where the, what, what is in here, what's in here. And it's a quick way to look at the layers. And sometimes, sometimes, the layers make a lot of sense. Right? It's like this says road, this says right of way, it makes a lot of sense. Sometimes it says RW19 24-7, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But graphically it does, so you can turn these things on and off and be able to look at that. So that should help you with that. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's just an easier way to deal with CAD data, um, a little simpler. And then with um, the labels. As well, one thing that's a little bit different in ArcGIS Pro is we do um, we get annotation. It's actually a point with a label annotation on it, just like any other thing. So when you convert that to a geo database, it's just a point with that annotation, and you can turn that into pure annotation or change the label on it. So it's just a little helpful thing with that. There's also at the bottom point here, um, I talk about there's an option in the backstage. It's not terribly well known, but for some people it might be important. And there's the ability is, sometimes I want to add a CAD file and I want to convert it right away. I just want to convert it right away. I don't want to inspect it. I just got to get it loaded. We have an option in the, what we call the backstage or the options of ArcGIS Pro. There's a CAD section. There's the ability there that you could participate in that where you turn that on. And then when you ever add a CAD file, it's going to automatically convert to the default geo database. So if that's something that interests you or helps you, that's something to pay attention to. If not, leave it off and you're good. So why don't I just show you quickly a little bit of example of that in Pro. So I've got a new map here. And we'll go into our folders. And I'm just going to go find some CAD data. Open it 
that. And so for this example, I've got some data. It's, um, it's just a plot drawing out of Manhattan, Kansas. I believe it is. And I've added this CAD file and we zoomed to it automatically. It looks like a classic CAD file. You can see it's got information in it that I that I need. It's a pretty good file because it lines up exactly. It's in the right spot. I'm happy, right? Everybody's pleased. So what I really want to do is let's say I can I can expand this. So in this case, what I'm interested in is just um, my polylines, for example. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to remove a couple of the layers or the future classes because I don't really need these for this example. So I'm going to remove those. And one more. So if I expand that, you can see exactly what it's talking about. Now we have these layers that are organized there, and it helps us discover I, PL must be plot, uh, polyline or plot line. Um, all these different things in the other. Some make sense, some don't. What you can do, of course, if you notice all of these are on by default, but you notice that one of these is off. And what that is, is that's the overall. These are all sub, these are all, um, a subgroup of this larger polyline. I can turn this on and then I get everything. See how that is. So I get all those lines, but in this case, I'm gonna turn that off because I know I want something here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out, let's try these blue, so I can identify, we can pick one of these, that's a ESP one. So what we can do is we can do a geoprocessing tool. So like I mentioned before, I've had a lot of people come to me and talk to me about, I've got this CAD data, but how do I get it into my GIS? And really the trick is, CAD data is just another data source. It's the same as a shapefile, geodatabase. Like I said, we built it down, brought it back up into a feature class. It's the same as any other data source. So you use the same methods as you would there. So in this case, I'm gonna go find um, copy features. Now, let's go, let's go. Hey, who's a... Uh, Who's brave? Let's go find the specific tool we need in all the toolboxes. When I first started Esri, there was, you know, like 30 or 40. There wasn't very many toolboxes in here. Now there's several hundred, so. Anyways, we'll let that spin. I'm building a cache. I guess I haven't done it yet, so. Anyways, so you get the idea. So then when that tool comes up, Back to that in a minute, I'll, I'll bounce back and we'll, we'll take a look at that. So, um, so that's the, the, the bit about position or loading your CAD data. So it's just an input. If that was working, we'll, we'll bounce back to that. What's going to happen is you're going to get the drop down and you're going to see all of those different layers in there. You don't have to pick polyline, you can pick whatever layer that you want from that. So that's kind of nice. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to go back. What's going on? It still doesn't work. All right. It's a feature to All right, here we go. Okay. Well, let's see. Well, it feels like it comes come back. All right. So, that, so that's that. And I'll jump back and show you that when I show you the next the part of this. So, so that's that's an important part of using CAD data in GIS. The next important part is who has had to position your CAD files. Did they come in the right spot? No. Sometimes, sometimes not. Right. Sometimes they do. So um, what we have is in ArcGIS map as well as ArcGIS desktop is we have the ability to position your CAD files. So we have a georeferencing process just like we do in ArcMap, which allows you to define a coordinate system with your CAD file. Then you can add it to map, fit the display, add your control points, and commit your georeference. Simple, done, easy, right? Um, so a lot of people ask why, why is that happening? It's because the CAD file was often drawn with a local coordinate system. And in the local coordinate system, they didn't worry about you know, adding a coordinate system. But sometimes that's not true. There are, is a coordinate system in there, and all you have to do is assign the right projection file to it, and it'll come in the right spot. You don't have to necessarily have to do all this geo-referencing. 
So what we really want to do is we want to go through this process of getting it in the right location, whether it be assigning a PRJ or applying a transformation. But really what we want to do is there's some people in this room who probably won't admit to it, but at some point or another, you've taken CAD data and said, I can't get this in the right spot, and you just redrew it or traced it or done stuff like that, right? Me too. Yeah, me too. So um, I guess what I say about that is georeferencing does a pretty good job. If the thing is in units that don't, don't even make sense or whatever it is, then it may not help you. But in a lot of cases, you can get it in the right position when you're doing these georeferencing. Yes. So how that looks is that we're looking here at um, a couple menus out of the Pro, um, ArcGIS Pro. And at the top there, you see that we have a um, georeferencing ribbon on the very top off a contextual tab. And when you click that, you get the bottom one. And that gives you all these tools that are specific to CAD data on how to georeference it. And that's where you go through about defining your projection, setting your georeferencing, adding your control points, and saving it eventually as well. I'll show you this in a demo. So. The other thing I want to mention as well is when we do georeferencing, it's important to understand that we do a two-point similarity transformation method. And what that really means is we're not going to change the aspect ratio of the curves, essentially, right? So the idea is we're going to scale it and make sure that it stays, it stays the same, um, same size and then the aspect ratio doesn't change. What you're talking about when you have to do and you have to muck with the CAD drawing and expand it or shrink it, you're talking rubber sheeting. Right? And that happens for sure. That's, that's something you have to do. If you want a rubber sheet, then you're going to have to convert it to a geodatabase and use our rubber sheeting methods inside ArcGIS to do that. It's, it happens, um, and sometimes you have to do it. Right? But, but there's definitely ability to do that. But that's not in all the cases that that happens. And this transformation is managed by what we call a world file. And this world file is... Uh, all it is is if you open the WLD file, like the name of your capital WLD, it's just a text file with a from to location of your X and Y. Um, so it's just an X, Y, and, and it moves into the right location. So something to keep in mind is that these CAD files aren't moving though. So if I get a CAD file from you, and you send me a CAD file and it hasn't, it's not in the right spot, I go and georeference it, and I put it in the right spot for GIS, that doesn't mean that I've when you take the CAD file back or you work with it, it's not moved. For you, it's in the same location. That's important to understand, is it doesn't move for the CAD user. If you want it to move for the CAD user, that's a different process altogether, and that's when we use Export to CAD or ArcGIS for AutoCAD or methodologies like that. That's a different thing altogether. But just, it's some important thing to keep in mind. One thing I always like to talk about as well is, if you haven't heard of it, but we have these, um, ESRI underscore, underscore CAD, uh, dot WLD, and dot PRJ files. And what these do is the PRJ files, you can look at this graphic here, this example, I've got a boatload of uh, CAD files that I've been given, and I know that they're all in the same coordinate system. So I can georeference one of them, and then I can move it into, um, get into the right coordinate system, I'm happy with it. Um, and then what I could do is I just rename it. And I rename it to ESRI underscore CAD WLD, and that's going to apply to all the CAD files in that directory. So that's a bit of a time saver if that's important because you have to do that. The same thing said for a world file, not as common, but maybe you get um, some CAD files that are tiled, you know, to cover an area, they're all sliced up. If I georeference one of them and they're all relative to each other, not on top of each other, then if I georeference one of them, I could rename my WLD file and they would all come in together at the right spot. So if that's the case you could try, that might be. Think of it as vertical as well. I've got multiple floors, which I'll show you. They go up and down like that. So. What do you think, is it done? Hey, it's done, all right. So if we go to data management, get the glasses on so I can see. So in this example, what I want to get through is show you is we have the polyline, like you said, the top level up there that I can turn everything on, but we also have these groups as well. So if I go and just pick my PL one, and I'm just going to take a default feature class and I run this. 
So then I can turn off all of that. And now I have pulled out of my CAD lines, I've just pulled out that information. So really it's just, just remember, geoprocessing is your friend when you're trying to figure out CAD data to pull things out. It's all with the geoprocessing framework. Using those tools like you use with any other data source to run those. And we made some improvements to help you maybe make it a little, you can pick multiple ones if you want to run it, use a different tool, but you get the idea of what's going on here. So, what about georeferencing? Let's go back here. So, here's an example of the Esri campus, right? And we have some buildings on campus. We have some more. We'll put it, incidentally, there's a new building going right here that they're in construction right now. So there's another big building going on in Esri, so that's cool. We need, we need the space. But um, in any case, what I want to talk about right here is a building W, and maybe we've got some remodeling going on, and our CAD person has gone, done some work for our contractor. So they've added it in our CAD file. So what I could do here is I could add the whole thing, but I think what I'll do is I'll just add the polyline information. So that's good, it's added, but I don't see it. Hmm. I zoomed a layer. Oh, there it is, looks good. Looks good, there it is. Never happens to anybody, right? It's halfway to Hawaii where we should be right now, but that's a good thing. Anyway, so that, that's a common thing like we talked about before. You got a CAD file in the wrong spot, and it was, um, that goes back to the data model. A CAD person, when they were, these files were drawn, especially older files, it wasn't important for them to add a coordinate system, because they were just drawing information that was a one-time use. It's just a data model difference. But we have, a, we have a solution for that, I guess, or else I wouldn't be showing you. So let's, let's go back to my friend's book mark. Go back here. And we can go ahead and, let me see here, I've got my polyline, that's fine. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to expand this. I want to pick one of these things and keep an eye up here. Do you see how something changed right here? We have a contextual ribbon that came up and it says it's to do with CAD layers. So if I click that, there I've got some tools. There's my feature plus, the feature plus, there's my copy. These are common CAD tools that you would use, are tools you'd use with CAD data. And that's kind of why we put them there. You can add more if you want or whatever, take those away and add the ones you want. That's something we can do. We also have this defined projection rule. And if I click this, that's gonna bring up the tool, define projection. And that's a tool you use to add a PRJ file to your CAD file, right? Same as a GeoDatabase, no, no different. But in this case, I'm not gonna do the, so that would be I added my PRJ file and it just lines up and it comes in the right place because they drew it in the right place. My CAD people they did a great job. I just can't read the AutoCAD PRJ file or the MicroStation one. So we add our PRJ file, which is the same one, Whatever you can, it's, it's probably going to be a state plane, um, Nat 83, whatever area, zone 5 California, zone 6 California, something like that. So anyways, so we can do this. So, but what I want to do here is we'll go back to here, and I want to use my georeferencing experience. So that, like I showed you in the screenshot, you can see that it brings up another ribbon right here. And this is what our georeferencing button is, and these are common tools you're going to use for georeferencing. I can go import one or I could go locate a specific location to find out where I want to place this thing. But likely what I, the first thing I want to do is I want to move it to display. So if I do that, there it is. It's in the right spot, it's perfect. Now, we have other tools as well that will help you play with that a little bit. I can zoom in, I can do my things like scale, I can move it around, I can, or rotate it, sorry, I can move it. And then I can, what's more important is, well, I want to get it exactly right, so I can add these control points that we're talking about here. And let's just say that is there. And this is my exacting georeferencing. So now that I've set that, I apply my transformation, and there you go, voila. So I can keep moving them and sliding around and do different things with it, but what I want to do is I want to save this. So I save it. And that's fine, it's added in there, I want to close it. So I'm done with my georeferencing, I'm all happy. That's great. But what I, if you realize here, I've got multiple buildings going on here. So I'm just going to minimize this under the other one, Windows Explorer. 
and go find this. And you can see that it created my PRJ, my WLD file. There's my from two locations, my WLD files. Nothing here to about. Let's do this. Because these building two, three are going to have the same problem, the second and third floor. If I use the format esri underscore tab, like so, and if I don't mess it up, too many clicks. Okay, I'm going to save that. And now I want to add my other buildings, right? So let's add those and then just see what happens. So what's going to, hopefully, if the demo runs right, what's going to happen is they're going to come in in the exact same spot right on top of that because they're, yeah, there they go, right? So that's just a quick way of using the georeferencing and that can help me. So you have the ability to move things around if you need to. Of course, I would say it's always best to work with your CAD partners to get them to have a coordinate system so you don't have to do any of this stuff to make sure they were drawn in the right spot. To do these, there's Arctic Arctic can help with that. There's a lot of other methods to help with that. So that's something to keep in mind. But anyway, you get the idea. All right. So let's switch gears a little bit. Now that we've displayed our CAD data, oops. We displayed our CAD data in the right location, we moved it, we're happy with it, it's in the right spot. We want to be able to load our CAD data in GIS. I showed you a little bit of that using that copy features tool to be able to copy my feature classes in place, but I know it's a lot more, there's a lot more to it than that. So, like I've mentioned before, and I say this over and over again because it is something that every year I, I find that people don't understand it because you hear the word CAD, and you think, well, it's this weird format that doesn't work in ArcGIS. Here it is, this display. But it really is, it's a geodatabase in a lot of ways. Think of it that way. So you have this, this CAD file that represents some as-built information or editing. We have some editing requirements that we want to do. And we want to move these things using the geoprocessing tools into our, our authoritative GIS format. And, the, and we have the, the geoprocessing to help us do that. So you can do this with lots of different methods, like you would with any other data source. Some examples of that is, how many here have to use, take an area where I've got a closed, or sorry, a area that that is closed by lines in CAD and it has a piece of text in it and I need that as an attribute, right? A closed area, yeah, exactly, lots of us. How many have a piece of text that's near a line and we don't want it to be an attribute of that line? So there's lots of scenarios. You have a CAD file and you want to be able to bulk load a whole whack of CAD files into a single geodatabase. And I want to dump those in there. So we have tools for that like CAD and geodatabase. So once again, some GP tools are going to help you accomplish this. But why don't I show you an example? So before I start, I wrote this tool a long time ago, but I wrote just an example of what you could do of not just loading CAD data, but doing something through a whole workflow with it. So at the end, if you guys want this, you're welcome to have them. I'll give you the tools if you want them. Um, I don't have cards. So at the end, I'll give you my email address, and if you want to email, you're welcome to have it. But, so this is for those that are not in ArcGIS Pro, we'll do, we'll do a ArcMap. ArcMap presentation, that's my son involved in that. I should have started this before when I finished the last one, sorry. It's working. What course is that? What's that? What course is that? What course is Oh, that's in Riverside, California. So. Mm. I can't tell you where, then you'll go there, and it'll be busier if I tell you where it is. So, <laughs> I can't tell you where it is. Come on, come on, go ahead. Anyways, so we'll let that spin. I'm gonna move on a little bit and while that comes up, we'll, we'll go into that. So while that's coming up, I wanna talk about um, export to CAD a little bit. So one of the things is 
that some of you put up your hand that you use export to CAD. One of the ways that you don't want to geo I don't want to have to geo reference my CAD data. I don't want to have to add a world file to it. I don't want to have to do that. It's a way to somehow get that embedded coordinate system inside of your CAD file, right? And one of the ways you can do that is run export to CAD. So think of it this way as I have my GIS information that I'm getting my contractor to give me CAD data to add to my GIS information. If I go and I run export to CAD and I um, delete out all the features, just go empty feature classes, even or even add a little bit of surrounding information, I run that export CAD, I send them the CAD file. That CAD file now has not a PRJ on the outside, but it has an embedded PRJ file. So that coordinate system is right inside the UWG file, and it's in the right location, so we don't have to worry about doing a world file or anything like that. So that's why export CAD can be a powerful tool for you guys to use. The other export CAD will really help you organize your workflows by providing that and then bringing them back and then it's, it's uh, uh, I mean, a less painful process, I guess I would say, by doing that. But that's working with your CAD department. The other way of doing that is with export, is with um, ArcGIS for AutoCAD, the free plugin that sits like AutoCAD, you can do that as well. And these, the um, PRJ would be um, on a Microsoft file, be on the outside of the embedded app that we get the idea. Let's check. Is it done cooking? Hey. Oh man, it's been stubborn. That never happens, you guys, right? <laughs> no? <laughs> Let's go another way. This is my favorite demo. We gotta do this one. There we go, look at that. <clears throat> Alright. Okay, we're in the same campus area and I'm going to lose my image because I just disconnected my internet. But, <clears throat> this base image. But get the idea that what I want to do here is I've got an AutoCAD drawing what I just georeferenced. I showed you guys, right? There's three fours of that CAD file. And what I want to do is I want to load that into the, my existing geo database with these offices. If you look closely, the, all these are offices with an Esri within the specific building. What I really want to do is load that in. So if I go over here now, and let's... I like the start on that, so they probably, it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the CAD drawing that my CAD operator had worked on, um, prepared, to show you how... Yeah, yeah. Perfect. And let's open up that. So, for those of you who know AutoCAD, MicroStation, whatever it is, this is pretty normal drawing, right? Is They did a great job. This is going to be the remodel for building W or a fictional remodel. And this is going to be where offices are going to be. Here's like my corridor. Here's some great doors, a swing door. It looks very familiar, right? So if we take a little closer look, if I figure out what, well, what level is that on? I'm doing my figuring out what things are, right? So this is on a wall there. And and then I've got a piece of text. Ooh, is that, what's that? And that's on another layer. That's an, uh, um, on a specific anode layer. That's fine. But what about this? We want to make polygons, right? We need, in GIS, we need to make polygons out of this, but we, we have to have closed space to create polygons. What this is, if you're not aware, this is supposed to be a sliding glass door, like a patio door. Mm -hmm. And this is an excellent CAD drawing because that's exactly how they look at our our campus. They're open all the time, so people can come see us. You know. But um, <laughs> anyways, but what they are is they're a block. If I list this thing and do this, this is an AutoCAD block, and this is how AutoCAD people work with, right? Because mm -hmm. they have blocks for repeatable things. And if you take pay special attention to on my on these sliding glass doors, they have the little casings inside that they slide into where you know I pinch my finger all the time. Those things. This looks 
like if you're if you're a Chinese person, this is a bit of a nightmare trying to make polygons out of this, right? Trying to close this. So let's close this file and let's take a look at something. And I wouldn't show you if I don't have a solution. So. so what I can do here is I'm just going to add in my building. So, I'm going to add this in, and we're going to use each one of them. I made a couple models that I want to share with you guys. So first of all, I want to load these things. So this is just a regular model that I put together, and I just I thought I would go through the process of what's going on here. Um, let's not do that. We'll do this one first. Yeah, let's do this one first. Let's get the idea with this, what's going on here. So on this one, it's a pretty, like I said, catch us another data source. So we're just dealing with CAD data like you would with any geodatabase. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run feature class to feature class. Oops. There we go. So you can see that it's just a, taking in my input polyline information. And uh, the one thing I want to do is I have an expression. And remember we looked at our CAD file, we know that the pieces that make up the area that we need are the A wall move, the A wall, and the door is what we also want as well. So the thing I want to do is I want to pull that first. The next thing I want to do, remember the, the sliding glass doors, how they were a block? I need to explode those so that I can turn those into lines so that I can do something with them to close that area. So I'm going to split lines at vertices the first thing I'm going to do. Then I'm going to do the old make feature layer, my favorite tool and model builder. And then I want to do what I want to do here is I've got these sliding glass doors and the walls exposed just as lines. So what I want to do is I want to say, hey, pull everything forward except something that's left less than a half a foot. So those casings, I want to get rid of those casings. I know they're less than half a foot and other small pieces, so I want to get eliminate that. So I eliminate that, and then I make a, few, a copy of it. And the next one is extend line. What you can do with this tool is you can do a simple um, extending where, where things will join up if they hit an intersection. And in this case, I'm going to strain it to that no more than 20 feet and if you hit something, extend the extension, which is optional. So this is another tool that is helpful. <clears throat> and then the last one, which is a tool I'm sure many of you use already, but the feature to polygon tool, if you haven't discovered this, this is the best way to create polygons from CAD lines. And you can, the nice thing about that is I can use my CAD annotation. So remember those office numbers inside of there? I can use those to create that. So if I, so cancel this, and Close it. I'm not going to run it because it takes a little bit of a little bit of time to be honest with you. Um, and let me just grab it and turn off my cat box. And let's just look at the campus polygon. You can see that now we've created. If we if we zoom in a little bit. Um, we've created all these polygons and that looks good. So we were able to close some of these lines and create these polygons. So I'm pretty pleased and I know that it closes every line. So here's some stairs and it made a bunch of polygons there. I think this might be the elevator. No, that's the elevator. This is something else. Um, so you can see it made polygons, but it definitely didn't make all of our polygons. One thing that we take a look at, if you notice this, is we have under ref name, you can see that's where automatically that identifier goes to the W3740. So I know, I know, I know that the polygons are really wanted, the ones that have an office number inside them. So how do we, how do we append that to our existing feature class? I have a tool for that. So in this case, we want to load this file. And in this one here, we go back to our make feature layer. Same thing, I'm going to create pull out the, all the polygons. But what I want to do is I want to say, forget the polygons that don't have a ref name with a valid number inside of it. So if it's blank, because that's a little slice of a stair or something else that is not an office, exclude those. I want to get rid of that. And then I copy the features and I append. Not rocket science, just the idea of putting these things together. The only caveat here is I'm going to append it to my geodatabase. So I want to make sure that my ref name is going to a different field that fits my data model. 
And I could run this, it just takes a second, but I already ran it, it's already sitting here. So I'm just gonna, uh, you're gonna have to trust me, I'm gonna remove that. And yeah, so here's, here's what runs. <clears throat> and let us, let me turn off everything. Yeah, okay, here's, here's what it created when you run the next tool. It takes a second, but here's what it created. It looks good, right? I've got my offices. If I take a look over here, hey, um, have I got my polygon and I have my office identifier um, right there. Right there, it fits my data model. I'm pleased, it's great. But I also have some other problems going on here, as you can see, right? Is I click this, and there you go. So I've got an off a hallway, which is probably where I spend, gonna spend my time, but um, there, this is an office, and that's not true. So we know that there's a hole in there somewhere along the way, so we, so these, it isn't a magic fix that everything's gonna be perfect, but it gets you along the way, you know, a certain percentage along the way, so you might have to do some cleanup later, but it gives you an idea of what you can do to do with that. So that's, that's what I just wanna mention with those. And like I said before, if you want those tools, let me know, I'll take my email and off the mic. Does everybody know the secret of, of Esri's email? It's the first initial of your name, your last name, at Esri.com. I never said that. Right? <laughs> so let's go back. So, like I mentioned before, so that's a way, of just a, a more uh, integrated example of how to do that. Um, so the next part is the export to CAD, like I just talked about. Export to CAD is an important tool I think that everybody should take a look at in your workflows so that you can get not only great CAD data to them, because with export to CAD, if I'm a CAD operator and you send me a bunch of points or something and they're supposed to be my fire hydrants, what I would really like is you send me a CAD file and my fire hydrants are actually fire hydrants. So there's ways to go in these fields that you could say, call, make a field called refting and call it an insert or a cell, and you can get a cell in MicroStation and give it um, a couple attributes. And if that file, if that AutoCAD file has that definition, the, re the block definition embedded in it, it will create, um, it will create the blocks like the CAD users expect, like a not a point, but actually a fire hydrant. And there's examples in the help system that go through that in the 10X help system. You can take a look at those and you can see those. So, oops, I'm gonna go back, I didn't want to leave yet. So that goes back to the idea of these seed files, right? Is you create the seed file, not only will it have the, the layer definition, but if you work with your CAD operators and you have all their seed definition, or their block or cell definitions, then you can create great CAD data for them. If you create CAD data, good CAD data for them or great CAD data, they might be more willing to deal with you. You know, like it's, you gotta you got kinda go both ways with it. So this could be one way that could help. The other thing that it does too is export and crack. CAD will create what we call these MSC feature classes. But I'll go into that in a moment. Um, so here's just a link to, on the resource page. Honestly, just, just look into the 10X help system and you'll see a list of these fields and it'll tell you what these fields do if you add them to your feature classes export to CAD will understand them, and they can do things like, I want to put this geometry on this layer in AutoCAD, and I want to make it this color or this line style. I want to make this point to be a block insert or a cell, and I want it to um, have these at depths for AutoCAD people, um, and have it that way. So, so there's ability to do that. Um, the other thing that export to CAD does is it creates what we call MSC, or what I call MSC mapping specification for CAD. Um, what that is, is GIS style attributes inside of my AutoCAD file. So if you think of it this way, if I take my feature class and I, my roads feature class and I export it um, to CAD, I'm gonna create my road and I can put it on whatever color layer I want. But what I've done as well is all those fields that are on my field feature class, they're embedded inside that AutoCAD file. And if you have the AutoCAD, Arches for AutoCAD application, you would actually see those fields and they can edit those fields. But but even if you don't have that, if I go now and I have my AutoCAD file and I've exported stuff to roads, I can draw, keep continue to draw on roads and all those 
features that I've drawn would go on the Rhodes feature class because the query would pick that up. If, if that, that explains it. And what does that look like? And then, and then of course, what does that look like? It looks like this. It's, there's our, the five feature classes that you're used to seeing, but if you see CAD files that have come across and they have these additional feature classes, I have parcels, for example. That's a subset of the polygon feature class, right? The polygon feature class is all of my polygons, but my parcel is just a subset of them. So when I take this, when I want to convert this thing or use this file, I can, I'll get my, just my parcels, I'll get the attributes that came through with it, and I'll be able to use it like that. So what I really want to say is, I know a lot of people, nobody here of course, but use shape files for, hey, my CAD people give me a shape file and then I'll take my shape file in and I'll use it. Oh, it doesn't have curves. There's lots of other things that shape files are fairly old. There's a lot of technology in them that aren't very modern and these things. Maybe a better idea is to use your CAD file. Forget about the shape file, forget about that, but use your CAD file because if, what do you want of the shape file? You want the geometry, you can get that. Can you get curves? Well, yeah, you can get that in your CAD file. Can I get the attributes? that I want to have, yeah, that's that's in the CAD file as well, as long as you've embedded in that MSC information. So um, it just makes it easier to transform. So if you use your CAD file to interchange instead of this in-between shape file, it's something to think about. Anyways, I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm just saying. So. Um, I also want to mention ArcGIS for AutoCAD as well. Um, right now, the version that's out there right now is 370. It is a free download from Esri. And if you haven't been to any of the sessions, maybe you have or heard about or talked to us at the island, I'll give you three or four really big things about it, is it allows you to um, add the Esri, back, or the Esri image services behind. I can get all my base maps, right? It gives me all access to my base maps. I can also assign a coordinate system or embed a coordinate system in my AutoCAD file. That's great. I can. Um, organize my features. I can create new feature classes in my CAD. I can set up domain new feature classes when I bring them back to GIS, then they're just going to be there. I can also um, use my location services to find out where I want to add something. We also have a Lisp API. But, we'll, but also, we also have the ability because it's um, a plug inside of AutoCAD, it's a window into ArcGIS. And you can actually connect to your feature services that you've got set up on your enterprise. And you can pull those down directly into AutoCAD and they turn into AutoCAD lines, spaghetti lines. And your AutoCAD person can make updates, add, remove, um, update, and they can synchronize back to that service. Now we get a lot of questions about, well, I wouldn't want my CAD people messing with my GIS data, right? Well, that, that's true of anything. And I, I think I would argue with that is I wouldn't let anybody mess with my gospel data. I would have some sort of um, uh, uh, version or some sort of service that I would connect to first, and then I would do my synchronize on the GIS side of things, how I want to bring those in. But that's a lot better way than trying to exchange CAD, CAD files back and forth, do things like that. So if you have that opportunity and you've got um, willing participants within your your, your uh, colleagues, you should take a look at that. One thing I'll mention is the 370 release right now, it's here right now, it really, it, um, it is, um, supports feature services and all the things I said, but the 400 release, which is coming in the fall, um, fall, is it is going to support ArcGIS Online, your named user. It's also going to be able to connect your portals. Because before we weren't, you could see stuff outside of your portal, but you couldn't see in the portal. And we've also gone through a big redesign as far as the UIs and kind of refreshed the product a little bit. And it's um, it looks pretty good, I think. So we, Obviously, got some bugs to fix yet and get things solid up, but um, it's looking pretty good, and, and uh, it's something that's going to come out in the fall. So it's just going to give you a new version, and it supports from 2016 to 2020 AutoCAD 2020. Um, it works within AutoCAD, um, AutoCAD Map, all these things. You ask the question, does it work in Civil? Yeah, it works in Civil, but the thing is, we only understand the non-complex objects. So if you open up a Civil file inside Vanilla AutoCAD, if you see those entities. That's what we support. We don't support the higher end ones. Not saying we're going to down the line, but that's an interesting thing for us to, to look at. So, I'm, I'm for that. So, I also like to put in best practices, and I think I've been saying them all along. I don't really need to say them too much. I mentioned that your C file or your template file in MicroStation. That's super important, I think, to work with your CAD people and your GIS people to work together. Get this 
get the process all figured out before you start doing this. So at least from this point forward, everything's a lot easier to work with. If I got historical data or old data, that's another thing altogether. Um, layer standard, plan ahead, same thing. Coordinate systems, make sure you agree upon what coordinate systems you want. You've got the seat all set up that they should work on and so that they can draw in the, the proper location. One, thing, one note is we don't support model space. There's no geographic um, census for it. It doesn't make geographic sense for us. It's something we don't support. Um, and then export to CAD. Um, the other thing I'll mention too is, is uh, the coffee and donuts. I could use one of those right now. But um, if, if there's a, if you Google ArcGIS for AutoCAD videos, you're, one of the things you're going to get to is you're going to get to um, a channel that a colleague of ours has put together, and it's got all these videos, a number of videos. I'm, I'm going to say 10 or 12 or 20 even, I don't know. But a number of videos, and it goes through pieces of ArcGIS for AutoCAD. And what I think it does a good job of is, yeah, it shows the product, but what it does is it, it's talking to the CAD people in the room. So the video does a good job. The videos do a good job of talking to the CAD people of what value it could bring to them to do this, to maybe want to use this application. Maybe there's one piece. Hey, if I got the base maps, that'd be pretty cool. I wouldn't mind using that. You know, the little thing is when you add a base map and it doesn't have a coordinate system, guess what? It adds a coordinate system to your CAD file. They don't even know what happened. Not that they care because they're drawing where they, oh, they see the spot and they're going to draw in that location. So, that, so that's something to think about as well. Anyways, so what did we talk about? Talked about a lot. We said we talked about the overview of how CAD supported an Arc Map and ArcGIS Pro. We talked about georeferencing, how you can go and you can georeference in Arc Map, which I didn't show you, but in Pro as well. You can do this very similar operations. We talked about the MSC or the mapping specification for CAD, and that's that attribute thing. We can talk more about that later if you want. Um, and we talked about loading the geodatabase. I showed you how an example model of, of using that maybe. You could use that in a similar workflow for yourself, but it gives you a starting point. And then we talked about export to CAD and then ArcGIS for AutoCAD. And something I want to bring up as well is there's still, yeah, there's still lots of time, but one of our colleagues down in the uh, learning lab, hands-on learning lab in the Hall A, is they have these classes set up in the free. If you want to go down and um, fiddle around with Pro or, or whatever, one of the courses they have in ArcMap is to do with CAD. But they have a lot of other resources there. They have instructors there that can help you. So I'd recommend if you have some time, um, if you have some time, there's a lot going on here today, I know, and all the days. Go down and try that out and see what you think. Um, the Arches for AutoCAD, I've already talked about that. And the one thing I always mention too is uh, Margaret Mayer has a book. Our tech support staff, Margaret Mayer, has dealt with over, over the years a lot of you guys. And when it comes to projections and um, coordinate systems oh. and lining up your CAD data. So she wrote a book. It's in its second or third edition. Um, if you have to do a lot of that, pick it up, take a look. And she really goes into the reasons why things are not lining up and why they, what are the causes of these things. So it might be interesting. One thing I have to make sure I mention is fill up your reviews, please. Let me know. Did this suck? Was it good? Should I do something different? Are you missing something? Was it too fast? Was it too slow? Whatever, it's all good. Some other sessions that are coming up I want to mention as well. I'll leave this up. Actually, before, before I leave this up, if you want the model. There, whoops. There. My name is Jeff Reinhardt. Remember I, the trick I said? J. Reinhardt at Esri.com. So anyways, if you want that model, send it to me. Send me an email, say, hey, I want that model. If you don't, don't send me an email, I'll be sad. <laughs> <clears throat> no, it doesn't hurt my feelings. This is an example, it's not, oh, I want you to go to the end. Uh, check that. So that's pretty much all I've got to say about that. Um, I appreciate your time, you guys. I know it's 4.54, thanks for staying, and enjoy the rest of your conference. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.